Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So if you're a researcher, I think you're familiar with every single research that before you're going to do anything, they need to reach a bunch, a bunch of research to, to figure out whether what are the research niche, what are the methodology, what has been left, what is interesting in the past result that you can continue forward. So uh, this requires a lot of time. You go to go a lot of website, download a lot of article, and go through them one by one just to see if they are relevant or not. So instead of doing that, I wrote uh, AI and tried to help me with that. So this is the code that I came up with in the end. So of course, uh, just to make a video that is more interesting, this is one of the best case scenario um, and you know, your mileage may vary, but you, you can try to have it to see if it works for your case. So uh, you can find all the code in the GitHub page. You can also find it on the website that are attached in the video description now below. That should walk you step by step on the code part, but I'll try to go through with you on why do I do a certain thing and if you're modifying the code for your purpose, uh, what should, you should look out for. So if you download the GitHub directly as a whole folder structure, uh, this is what you will get. I'm not gonna upload, upload any of the PDF that I use for fear of copyright reason, but you can try to fill it in with your own later. Okay, so you can find the script file as here, testmoney.rmd. You can use that directly to open in your R Studio. And the other three folder you need to look out for is the negative, positive, and the test. So uh, in the negative, fill it with the PDF that you find that is irrelevant to your field of studies. You maybe you have 30, maybe you have 100, but you need to go through them uh, to make sure that they're not relevant. Uh, for what I have done here, for the positive, I've filled it up with 37 individual social science article that I actually downloaded everything from PLOS ONE because they are open access and it's very easy and they are quite fast. Okay, so while in the positive folder, I fill up with 62 different articles from either data management, genomic studies, phylogenetics, RNA sequencing, and so on and so forth. So these are all the articles that I'm interested in. That means I'm the, this is the positive that I want and this is the negative that I don't want. And I want to build an AI to automatically classify new PDF file into one of the two pounds. Okay, which is why we have another folder called test. So what I did is that in the negative folder, I actually extracted three files and put in here and then I label them as negative. So we're gonna test our AI later on, whether they are correctly, they're able to correctly identify these three as a negative and these three as the positive, okay? So the, remember in the training, they should not see six of this file and they should only be trained on these two folder. Okay, so once we figure out the basic folder structure, let's go to our, our script, our code. Okay, so you can open this in RStudio and make sure you are in the correct directory. So in this case, uh, if you're opening directly from the folder, uh, then the, the folder of positive negative tests should be contained together with the RMD and you are safe on that. Okay, so that will be the first step where we set up folder and file system with a PDF in positive and negative folder. Okay, so the next one, there'll be nine main chapters before we get our get to our result, but let's go one by one by that. So the first step is actually to make sure you're in the correct directory, as I said just now, and list down all the positive file and negative file. So why do I want to do them separately? Because I want to make sure that I know the number of them of what I have and later it'll be easier for the next step actually. So you can have a, you can, so yeah, this one just get all the file directory for positive, this one get file directory for the negative, and I join the two as a list and I print out the file. So this one will be quite easy for me to inspect. Oh yeah, there's a, a, there's all the numbers that I want and it looks about right. Okay, so 97, yeah, about 97 different file that I included over here. Okay, so the second step, because uh, it's an AI and I don't have uh, the computing power of GPT-3 or Google or Facebook and Amazon, so we're gonna try to limit or try to redirect our the, our AI to a very narrow field. So in this case, I'm using a keyword detection in PDF. And if you have um, more problems, it's actually another video that I done earlier about text mining to detail through how do you do a word count per PDF file. Okay, so these are the, the, the word that I chosen and actually works well with the sample group that I have. Feel free to uh, adjust this on based on whatever need that you have. Of course, you will be more familiar with the keyword compared to compared to me in the field of your studies. Okay, so what are the so basically what are the keywords that only can um, appear in the paper that you want to find? So it depends on what study you want to do. 
Okay, so in this case, we're using import library D plus string iron PDF tools. You can just go to package, install, and you know, type in whatever package I know and install. After you have installed them, only then it will work. Otherwise, it will show you an error of this package is not found. Just go and install them and you'll be fine. Okay, it will take a while for Dipler. The rest should be fine. Okay, so the next one is I want to create a word count matrix. So what I meant is I want to have a word matrix where the keyword is on the top and the individual article on the on the row and they'll count how does how many does each keyword appear in each of my article okay so i'm creating a, a word count matrix with 67 uh column that's the individual paper and no actually i'm doing a file length and word length so in this case uh i'm my word count has 97 and 20 so yeah i have 97 columns over here and no, no, I have 20 column means that the keyword is on the column and the paper is on the row. Yeah, I'm right on that. Okay, so basically I just want to create this matrix to see how does, how many times each of my keyword appear in each of my PDF file. So how I attempt to do that is to use a tool called PDF, uh, PDF tools, PDF text. Where, so what does this loop do? You based on the number of file and every single file, I will do some of the editing to remove, let's like, say, the tabs, the line breaks, the multiple spacing because I don't want that and that makes the search a bit slower. So I'm also going to remove all the digital, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and all the punctuation and only left the words. And I'll also make sure that everything is in lowercase. So in the keyword up there, make sure it's lowercase, otherwise it will not work properly because I, I don't care about DNA is uppercase or lowercase. As long as there's DNA in there, I want it to work. So once I figure out this for one article, I'm gonna pipe it into a word count, where it's a very simple string count to count how many um, words that appear each time. And I'm gonna sum all of them. So then it pipe it into a word count. So what I have in the end will be something like this yeah it's 97 different article so it's gonna take some time so it's gonna look through it 97 times and every article is gonna look to it 20 times and just be careful when you run this because this thing increase exponentially when you have more keyword and more file so it basically is something like that so we have 96 7 entry with 20 total column so this is the keyword and this is the row now it's still very hard to see so I want to add in the 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 name of the the, the column and the name so let's so what i'm going to do is that here basically i just have to pipe in what are the positive and the negative inside so i will change it also into another one called word matrix as you can see right here so p1 to p61 here refers to the positive control and n1 to n36 here refers to the negative control okay so yeah i believe just now where i say 30 uh 30 Seven, uh, I forgot to actually uh, cut down the placeholder. So the placeholder will not be included. So there's only 36 files over here. Okay, so you can see that in positive one, there's 61 times sexonomy being mentioned. Uh, you also have species being mentioned, 18, 39, 23 here, and almost nothing in our negative control. Well, I don't know why N25 has 33 times amplification and so on and so forth. So uh, if you are very patient, this should already inform you enough about what paper you should read and what you should not uh, but I'm a bit more lazy than that so I'm just going to use an AI to do it for me so uh, instead of doing the graph of the number like I said just now I also like to plot out a heat map so I can see that DNA species is actually quite a lot of number to appear uh, same with participant and population and remember when you choose keyword uh, you can also choose not just on positive side which is it will detect in positive control try to also choose some keyword that only exists in the negative control. For social science, that will be our participant and population. Most of the time, those two will only be there. And it will, be, it will actually help the machine learning to try to separate them out later. So you can also see from the dendrogram that they're quite further away from the rest of the thing. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, however, what the problem is that you can see the molecular biology, negative binomial, the number is so little. So, uh, so that it might actually not bring enough resolution or any use for machine learning later. So we're going to try to get rid of them. So I get rid of them is how I get rid of them is that as long as a keyword does not appear more than 10 times in 
basically that keyword in all the 97 article, it doesn't appear more than 10 times. I'm gonna throw them away and I'll only be left with initially 20 keywords, now only 17. So I throw away our DEGs if I'm not wrong. Yeah, so DEGs that might not be here anymore. So that will automatically help me to lower down my sample group for calculation so that the, the further calculation will be a lot, a, a little bit easier um, to, to do. Basically the training will be faster. Okay, so uh, so what I initially think is that this is a binary classification, right? I have a data matrix, I wanna separate them into two groups. SVM is the most obvious choice because they draw a straight line to separate the two groups out. I, I, I cannot use things like KNN and K nearest neighbor because that's usually more useful for multidimensional and I think SVM will be a really good way to do it. However, because I'm I mean, there's a lot of tuning needed, obviously. If you go in and tune things one by one, I'm sure you'll be able to get a better result. But basically what I did for the, you can base on the confusion matrix over there. Uh, I have only about 80% accuracy and still 20% of them misclassified, where the reference is a positive, but they put it as a negative, where the reference is a negative and put it as a positive. So it is great because a lot of time you will not need to uh, read any un, in a useless one, but it also throw away a lot of good papers that I want to read. So that's a type one and type two error over there. So yeah, a lot of positive being uh, detected as false negative, a lot of negative being detected as a false positive. So I, I don't want that. I was thinking, is there a way that can increase the efficiency of the classification? So since it's a binary classification, a yes and no, uh, right or left, up or down. I am. I think the second thing that I think of is uh, logistic regression. So it's just based on a log curve. So I also do that. Again, I'm quite lazy to go in and tune the individual parameters. But yeah, it's not that great. You know, I only get 10, 20. That I believe in this case, the, uh, the, the overall, what's that called? Cal the overall, overall, uh, accuracy is actually lower. In this case, only 70%. Again, you're right. I can tune the parameter, I can change things one by one, and I can make sure that it gets above 80% accuracy with a certain parameter and threshold and settings. But I'm lazy, so I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> so I didn't do that. So what I immediately think of after I've, I've failed in my both SVM and logistic regression, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna go back to my machine learning just to see what happens. <laughs> so I actually adapt this script directly from the animating neural network script that I done beforehand uh, so that I can just adjust the iris data to fit to this data. And if you're interested with that, you can actually see the other one on how to animate a neural network and see in real time how a neural network actually learns. But what I do here is I would I put the train data from as a word matrix. So I take all the word matrix that I created just now, uh, this one, yeah. And I put it as my train data here. So just to increase the chances a little bit, I also do a copy data, which is increase it by two to the power of five. So increase it by 32 times so that the, the, there's more repeats in the same data and it's easier for the machine to learn. So then again, train label will be the, either positive or negative. Uh, I also change it to a one hot encoding because it's faster for the machine to understand zero and one rather than uh, understand zero when one says a numerical thing. So a train label should look something like, yeah, something like this. So if it's on the back, I believe it's the positive, is in the front, is a negative, something like that. So this is called one hot hot encoding. So okay, so once I've done the, the train label, which is here, so this is the input to my machine learning and this is the output of my machine learning. So I just started training. So why do I choose this certain, what is that called? Why do I choose um, the particular number of nodes and the number of layers? And more or less by chance where I try to run it and it works really well and I just don't really want to continue on to run this. Okay, so basically this is my parameters where I have one, two, three, four, five, five layers. Uh, actually four hidden layers and the number of nodes is, the input is 20, 17 and they increase to 27, 56, 27, uh, 28, 
14 and 2 as the output. So that's great. So then I just go in train my neural network. Uh, I'm not too sure why there are some error code here, just ignore them. So yeah, basically the, the training actually start initially for about 61% accuracy. So remember, if you generate things on random, your accuracy will be about 50%. So that's your starting point and accuracy should go up uh, quite fast in the first 10 or 20 epochs. If it doesn't, means you have something wrong and you need to readjust it. But after 20 epochs of training, I get to about 92.69% accuracy, which to me is good enough. I do not want 100% accuracy just for fear of overfitting, but at least 92% it is a lot better than the 80% or 70% that I get from SVM and logistic regression basically. So I'm happy enough, I'm gonna do my neural network and do it on testing. So yeah, this chunk of code over there is a, actually a repeat of whatever out there. But now instead of loading in positive and negative control, I'm loading it from test. Okay, so if you have, let's say you have another 50, 60 different files that you want to classify, but you haven't read, uh, you can load it into a test file and press this, and this should load in the file, train it, predict it, and you know, uh, give out a... So it will give out the, the, the training data for the, for the network. So the last one will be use the predict function uh, to predict the outcome from the model where x is equal to x because we use x as our training data just now and we try to predict it and what we end up with is this one okay so what what happens here is they are completely gone because uh the training something wrong means i have to retrain the data isn't it okay let's just let's just retrain the data and i believe we can cut this out later <laughs> yeah, I think I missed out one of the one of the chunk up there, isn't it? So yeah, at least now you can see the training data in real time. Again, because Keras and TensorFlow start with a random number, um, it is likely that your exact training mechanism and accuracy will not be the same as mine. And then we run the testing data and we pipe it into that. So now you can see instead of uh, 97 rows of data, we only have six because we only have six different input over here. Okay, as you can see, the six input are negative, 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 positive, positive, positive. So in our X, uh, the first three rows should equate to a negative, or the last three rows should equate to a positive. Okay, that would be what we expect. And let's just train outcome. So you can see that now for the training outcome, which you will be running is something called confusion matrix, which is a comparison between the negative and the positive. You see that the reference negative is predicted as negative and the positive is predicted as a positive. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically that. That means that my model works on the training model. I can get 91% or 93% accuracy. And in the test sample, I can also correctly classify them based on it is positive or negative. So now basically, uh, which article should I read means I want to only read the positive and negative I want to ignore. So in reality, most likely your positive will be a lot higher than your negative. Maybe you get 10% or 15% of negative in a pile of PDF that you've chosen and you know you can kind of ignore the rest and only read the bunch that the machine tells you. Or if you're doing the other way where you only have 10% of paper that you want to read in the whole bunch, it can also happen. Okay, so once you run the last one, it will actually tell you that in positive, you have negative is 0, 0, 0, and you only filter out. So this is a filtering function. You only filter out the positive 1, 2, and 3, and this is the file name that you can look into, and these are the paper that you should read. Okay, so you, uh, the training might take a little bit longer, but the, the testing stage is actually a lot faster because you are no, you are no longer training a neural network. Meaning that if I have how many number of files, let's say I have hundreds of files, 300 of files, 500 of files, you can actually easily do the whole thing with this as long as you don't run out of RAM on your computer and so on. So that's basically the whole thing. So now I have three paper that I know I need to read and maybe I'll go read them. So uh, again, you can find all the codes here in the video description down below and feel free to try to fork this code on GitHub and try it on your uh, research field to see if it works. Actually, I, I'm, I'm curious if it works outside of a very controlled environment like mine. Uh, so that's all for today. Thank you for watching and leave a comment down below for the next video idea if you want to see. This is one of the few times where I write almost all the code from scratch. Okay, bye. See ya.